Okay, so this is our iodine salt reaction, and I want to show the difference in changing the um, concentration of I minus and the concentration of um, the S two O eight two minus. So, so I'm going to add the last part. So it's a, as you saw in the iodine salt reaction, it's a quite a few different things, and I'll leave the reaction up there. But I just want to compare. First, what happens when we double the concentration of the iodine? So this one has half the amount of iodide as this one right here. This one's taking a while. Oh gosh, I'm gonna do it. Hmm. Gotcha. There it goes. So one went first, the one that had more iodide, right? for that other one, see about how much longer it takes. And it goes that blue into that really, really dark blue. The thing about this reaction is it just changes like that. And so there we go. You just stare at a clear solution thinking you probably forgot something. All right, so we saw it went significantly faster when we doubled the iodine. So now we're gonna double the S2O8 negative two. And so this one right here is going to have twice the amount of S2O8 minus as this one right here. So you can probably predict what will happen. And there goes the more concentrated S2O8 minus. Never seen like a watch reaction doesn't turn blue. There it goes. We remember the starch in all of them. <laughs> Fantastic. So significantly longer. All right. Now I'm going to do it a little bit different. I'm going to show it uh, with differences in temperature. I'm going to have. One test tube right here, that's gonna be at room temperature. One that's gonna be cold. And one that's gonna be hot. And I'm just gonna, I've heated this water up. I'm gonna take it off just to make it simpler to view. All the way down, yeah. All right, so now we're gonna add it to three, one at room temperature, one cold and one hot um, on the count of three. One, two, three. And in this case, we are thank you so much. Uh, we have the same concentrations in each of these test tubes. And look, the hot one has already turned black, or I mean, I'm more blue. So I'll show you. you can't see it already. So it was basically instantaneous that this one changed color. And 
here's our room temperature one, which theoretically should happen next. So when the concentrations of these go here are the same and it's temperature that changes between them, it's really the K value that's changing because it's uh, that reaction constant has a temperature dependence. And so we see it'll go a lot faster at a higher temperature. I expect them that we'll see the room temperature one go next and then the cold one last. So that hot one was instant. Let's see what happens with these other two. Cold one's still clear. Oh, look, there goes the room temperature one. All right, so that was you know a handful of seconds later. All right, so the hot was first, then the room temperature. And when we look at the cold one, it's still clear. Give it a little kinetic energy, why not? And we'll see how long this one takes. Yeah, so it's the same concentration of the iodide, it's the same concentration of the S2O8 minus, same concentration of all the other kind of filler things that keep the ion balance the same. And we're just changing the temperature on this one. And so these are actually all the same as the, the one that was compared between the concentration increase. So we doubled the iodide and we doubled the S2O8 minus. And uh, we compared that to one that was the same concentration of what we're working with here uh, with the different temperatures. So it still hasn't gone. Sometimes these take a while when they're really cold. So, you know, we'll give it a second here. I'll keep an eye on it.
it finally changed blue. It took a lot longer in the ice water. So that was the effect of temperature. Um, and that was all just changes to the K value um, as we played around with hot room temperature and cold reactions. 